Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to the second video in how to program in C Sharp. It's been such a long time since the last one and I'm really sorry about that. Uh, but I've been working on something really cool, which you might see from the wallpaper here. And I've also been traveling a lot, but I'm finally back home and ready to start pumping out some videos. So this is just a short one, uh, but we're going to take a look at something really important, which is input and output, meaning how we read and write from the console. Uh, so that's super cool. But first, before we get started, I quickly want to show you the all-new Brackies developer forum. As you can see, we have a full-on answers section uh, where you can ask questions and, uh, and, and get answers. Uh, we have a discussion section where you can share opinions about stuff. And then we have showcase and collaboration, so you can show your work and you can collaborate with other developers. It's super awesome, and uh, here it is. This is how it looks. So you can see that we have uh, infinite scrolling. Uh, there are a statistics, there are different categories. We have some hot topics, so you can see what's trending, and some top users, which you can very much still uh, get on top of if you uh, join quickly. So you can simply click here to start a topic or log in. You can join with both both Facebook and Twitter or just fill out the boxes and hit join. It's very simple and very easy. And I very much hope uh, that, that you will join and, and be part of this quickly expanding community because we really need to fill this up with users. Also, thank you to all the beta users uh, out there who've been uh, testing and reporting bugs. It's really been helpful. So if you see a bug or want a feature, please just go ahead and request it. I've made a topic for you to do so. Great, so that was the introduction to today's video. Let's just go ahead and delve right into it. So let's open up Xamarin Studio. And once it's opened up here, we're just going to load our first console project solution. And now we're back to where we left off in the last video. Cool. So what I really want you to understand right now is that coding you can't just understand everything at the same time. You have to take one piece at a time. And uh, this piece of code right here that it automatically generates can be hard to understand. Um, so uh, Things such as classes and namespaces are not always easy to comprehend. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually ignore most of this and then we're going to focus on writing a, a program that will start up and write something and uh, then await some user input. So for now, we are going to ignore the using system, the namespace, the class, and all we are going to be focusing on is putting code inside these two curly brackets. So everything inside these two are important for us right now. One thing I will quickly go ahead and say is that this right here is what is called a method. It's pretty similar to what you know as a function from Unity script or uh, using C sharp in Unity. Uh, so, and this is a method, a method, and it's called main. So that's pretty much all we need to know about the syntax here is that this right here is the method name. What this method actually does is uh, it is called when the program starts. That means that everything we put inside these two curly brackets will run as soon as we run the program. So that's going to be pretty much our entire program inside these for now. Cool. So right now you can see that we have one line here called console.write line hello world. Uh, and we're just going to go ahead and delete that because we are going to write something on our own. So first off, we're going to go ahead and write console. So now we are writing to the console, so we want to access the console class. Just like we have a class up here, we are writing to the console class. Classes are going to be more clear to you what they do and, and what they can be used for later. Then we're going to do a dot, which means that we will access all of the stuff inside the class. Pretty much like if you have a... Uh, category called main uh, called console and then we're accessing all the subcategories all the function and values inside of that class then we want to uh, do write line and you can see that it uh, suggests what to do 
uh, while we write it. So that's super, uh, uh, super awesome. And we can also, when we have one of the um, one of the objects here uh, selected, you can see that we can uh, view a summary of what it does. This right here is a method, just like our start uh, method here, our main method that is called when the program starts. The console class has a method called writeLine that will write the current line terminator to the standard output stream. That's, that basically means it will show a line on the console. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And then we're going to open up two parentheses and we're going to end with a semicolon. So this right here uh, is how you call a function. Whenever you, you want to call a function, you, you, do, you find the function then you open and close two, par uh, two parentheses and you close it up with a semicolon, which is very important. Cool. So everything inside these two parentheses is what we call a parameter. And a parameter is a way to pass a value onto the function. So we can simply say, hey function, please do whatever is inside of your curly brackets. And remember to use this value along the way. And different functions have different parameters. Some functions don't even have any parameters. And some functions, like this one, can take multiple different kinds of parameters. And to view what kinds of parameters that this function will take, what we can do is we can say console right line and here above the summary which says that uh, it writes the line and so and so we can also see that it says 1 of 19 and that's because this function can be uh, called in 19 different ways meaning that it will take 19 different parameters that's a lot uh, most of the functions that we're going to be creating maybe takes one but it's because that um, we both want to be able to maybe write a number to the console or a full-on sentence or just one single character or maybe a number with decimals. Um, so there are, there are many different types of values that we want to send to this function. And to view the different uh, values, uh, you do shift. And on Windows, with the number pad, you do 4 and 6 uh, to go back and forth. But on Mac, I'm pretty sure you can just do shift and then the arrow keys uh, to browse through. So do shift and then I'm on a window. So I'm going to do six to go to the right. And you can see that here's the first um, version of this method that we can call. And this takes an, an oolong. And uh, you can see what that does in the description, but that's not what we want. We don't want a long either. This is a uint. This is a bool. And there is a string. And basically, I haven't told you about variable types and what all these different uh, weird names actually mean. But just know that a string is uh, basically a sentence. It's a series of characters. It could be one word or a whole sentence. So we're just going to use that one. So now we know that this function can take a string value. So let's actually give it one. So Again, we have the console.writeLine, and inside of these two parentheses, we're going to do these two quotation marks. Because everything inside these two quotation marks is a string. So we can do, hello, I'm a computer. I'm sent from the future. And now we actually have a full on line that will write to the console. So if we go ahead and hit play, theoretically this should work. And it will on Mac. On Mac this will execute just fine. But on Windows it's not going to work and I'm going to show you why. So if we go ahead and hit play up here, you can see that it very very quickly, quickly opens up the console and then closes it back down. And the reason why is on Mac, whenever it's done doing what it should, it will just stay open until you close it. But on Windows, when a console application is done doing what it should, it just automatically closes. 
So what we want to do is we want to await for the user to do something before the console closes. So to do this, we are going to read from the user. So again, we're going to access the console. We're going to do dot. Then we're going to type read. And then you can see we have different kinds of read functions. We could do read, which reads the next character. We could do read key, which obtains the next character uh, or function, key pressed by the user. Or we could do read line, which reads a whole line of characters, uh, which basically is a string. Uh, but in our case, we're just going to do read key. So whenever the user presses a key on the keyboard, uh, the application is going to quit. And you can go ahead and do this on Mac also. It's, it's generally good practice to do. So go ahead and do console.rekey, and this is not going to take any parameters. So just open and close the parentheses, and end it up with the semicolon. Now when we go ahead and hit play, you can see it opens up a console saying, Hello, I'm a computer, I'm sent from the future. And once we press something, it will close back down. So that's pretty much the end of this video. I'm going to do something new, which is give you a challenge to complete before the next video, where I will show you how it's done. What I want you to do is I want you to write out your age and your uh, name. And then I want you to await the user input. So I want you to wait for some kind of user input and then write out a new line saying what your favorite color is. And then finally, of course, await user input so that the console doesn't uh, quit immediately. I'm going to show you how this is done in the next video. Also, one nifty tr trick if you want to do long sentences on multiple lines, instead of just making a new console.write line uh, method call every time you want to make a new line, you can simply use this character right here. So you do backslash, uh, so reverse backslash this is, and then N. That will make a new line. So you don't have to put spaces around this because then you will just have unnecessary spaces. So just input that character, which is the reverse backslash, and then an N. And then we can do, uh, let's say, uh, this is a new line. So once we hit play on this, you can see that it makes a new line. Cool. So that was all I wanted to show for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.